In this video, we're going to talk about measuring metric length, and we're going to talk about the precision of different metric scales. So first thing we want to know that when you measure metric length, usually you're using something that we call a ruler or a scale, like this meter stick or one of these rulers. Of course, if you have a small object, you probably want to use a small scale or a small ruler. Something a little bit bigger, you probably want to use a little larger size ruler. Something even bigger yet, then you want to use even a larger size scale or ruler. If you're going to measure a really long length, we can actually use something like this trundle wheel. The circumference of that wheel is exactly one meter, so I simply will walk along and measure out my distance like that, and the distance gets recorded there. Next thing we want to talk about is how to read these scales and the precision of metric scales. Let's take a look over here. This is one meter. There is very little precision to this because there are no graduations on it, so it's really only accurate to the nearest meter. When I turn it to this side, now there are 10 graduations on it. Each of these is what we call a decimeter, which is one-tenth of a meter. So if I had something that was this long, I would record it as 0 0.6 meters or about six decimeters. Whereas if something was just a little bit shorter, now I'm closer to the 0.5 meters or five decimeters, so I would record it as that. We can get even more finely divided or more precise. This scale is graduated to the nearest one half of a centimeter, so there's actually uh, 100 centimeters divided in half, there's 200 divisions on there. And then this one, which is like the one that you'll be using most of the time in science class, is divided into a thousand. So it's a thousand millimeters, or there are each centimeters divided into one tenth of a centimeter. So this is what we call the most precise scale, and that's the one that you normally want to, want to use when you're measuring. As an example, we'll take our ruler here. We want to measure, say, the longest side of that roller. I'm going to lay that roller down like that, making sure it lines up with the zero on one end. And now when you look directly down on that, it looks like it's reading not eight centimeters, but between eight and nine. I want to read to the nearest tenth. It's just past at the sixth graduation, so that would be 8.6 centimeters. So what if you want to know the volume of an object, that is how much space it takes up? If you have a regularly shaped object, like this one, or this one, or anything for which the volume can be described with a mathematical equation, you can just use that mathematical equation, you just measure the length, or in this case the three lengths that are required, so I would measure length times width times height to get the volume of this. Um, in this one, Volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, so I need the radius r. So I could use a caliper like this to measure the diameter, half that diameter is the radius, and then I could just plug that into the equation. So regularly shaped objects, use the mathematical equation, plug the length into the equation. Irregularly shaped objects, like Jimmy Rollins' head here, no mathematical equation to describe the volume. So in that case, I would have to use a different method which we'll talk about in a different video, measuring volume by displacement. 